All right, so I have, um, I have two general announcements, and then I'm going to run through the plan for today. General announcement number one, I've already, I think, made clear, which is that um, the, the last week, if you're a senior, two weeks, if you're not, um, of this course, your grade is purely formative, right? So if you think about, if you're one of the people who tracks like the 90-10 or the 80-20 or whatever, like this is the percentage of your grade that is purely formative, which means you can get full credit, and what I'm asking you to do for that full credit is I want you to either show me that you are, that you care and are interested in learning about physics, or fool me into thinking that you care and that you're interested in learning about physics. Either of those things is fine. If you don't show me that, then I won't give you full credit, and if you don't fool me into thinking that, then I won't give you full credit. Which means for most of you, it's super easy, right? Like all you have to do is just like either just be interested and curious in what's going on, or pretend that you are, and um, and and that's all. That's all I ask. Uh, my thank you. My oh, oh, he's not here. My interest in this is um, is professional, and and it, and what it boils down to is that. I would like these last few days, week or two weeks, whatever is left for you, to be something that is valuable to you. I truly believe that it will be more valuable to you if you do stuff that you're interested in. And I think it will be less valuable for you if you are fighting for points and trying to get like stuff done and you're not learning anything and you're not caring. So I'm going to I'm going to do my best to to live up to that. That is a professional ideal of mine that learning is really cool and important and um, so I'm going to try to make that your incentive. Um, and some of you have figured out, oh that's kind of really what I am looking for anyway and and that's true. I still need something. I need stuff from you. I need some sort of evidence that you have done stuff because when push comes to shove, if someone comes to me and says, this person, I looked on Canvas, they have nothing in the grade book, but you gave them a B or an A, like what's the deal with that? I cannot justify that. I can't say, well, I just really like this person, or I feel like they learned a lot. I need something from you. So with that being said, I went through the grade book just a couple hours ago, and I put in zeros for missing assignments. And that means you all have one of a few jobs. The easy job is if you've got something done but you just haven't turned it in, then turn it in. And we'll all look at it and we'll figure it out. If you don't have something done and we had talked about it, we had a plan, you spoke with me and I told you, well, because you had surgery and you were in the hospital for two class periods, then when you came back, you couldn't you couldn't work because you're you were still recovering. I'm going to excuse you from this assignment. If I told you I was going to do that and I didn't do that, then your job is to contact me and say, Brigard, remember, we have this conversation. You said you were going to excuse that assignment. Can you please do it? And I will. Your third option, for those of you that, that don't meet the first two, um, is going to be to do the work and get it turned in. So if you haven't done the work yet or if you're only partially done, then let's figure out how you're going to get it done. Um, and I do my best to keep track of all that stuff mentally. It's super hard. So it's easier if you email me. Um, and and um, if you email me and we have a plan, then um, I, I, I have no interest in penalizing you. I do not want this to be a punitive thing. I just want, I want to see what you've done. And um, some of you have an excellent reason for not having one or two things completed, and I can work with you. But I also, I just need, I need as much documentation as possible. Okay. So what that means is, check Canvas at some point. If you're a senior, sooner the better. If you're a senior, get your stuff turned in. The sooner the better. Or talk with me. Make, let's make a plan. Okay. So that we can get this all worked out. If you're a junior, then you have a few more days, but still, like. Um, I am not going to be entering grades after the end of next week, so stuff has to be in. It's just got to be in because I can't. I, I can't. I, I, some of you know I'm taking a group of students to Panama, at the end of June. So I'm not going to be able to do any kind of grading or anything like that. We're going to get to the end of the year and we are done. 
Um, so, um, okay, so that's that for your work today, which is the third item on my agenda. Um, I'm going to ask that you um, look at um, springs and simple harmonic motion in springs, and I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. The first is, I'm going to ask you to, with some constraints, determine the period of a spring simply by using um, observations that you can easily make about simple harmonic motion. And the, the big constraint here is, um, sorry, did I say period? Because what I meant is spring constant. The spring constant. You're going to find the spring constant by only using observations you can make about simple harmonic motion. And, um, and so what that means is you're going to start an oscillation with a mass hanging from a spring. And you'll see, like this one, just coincidentally, is a really good little system. It's just a little bit of mass, and it's a reasonably, um, like, like, uh, uh, ideal spring. It, it conserves energy pretty well. This thing's going to oscillate for a while. This motion right here, there's a couple of different things you can measure, just two things, and you can find the period of that spring. And then, after you've done that, I want you to verify it in what is actually an easier way to find the period of a spring um, that involves a different set of measurements, and it involves this equation right here, which you could solve for k. But I still don't want you to use any force sensors or spring scales. So, and it's, it is not hard. The interesting thing comes when you, when you figure this out, which is not super tricky. Once you figure it out, you'll be like, oh, well, all, all I need to do is this one thing. And where it gets interesting is this won't work everywhere. This works here. It'll work here where we are right now which is great, but it won't necessarily work everywhere. And so that's the advantage of being able to figure it out this way. Um, your springs will have to be oriented vertically for that to work. Your spring wouldn't have to be oriented vertically for the other method to work using the simple harmonic motion and the measurements you can make with that. Um, you can also play around with, and here's where the disaster will ensue, um, with springs that um, have um, slightly larger spring constants like this one, which, um, which has a, um, I don't know what the spring constant is, but it's a much heftier spring. Oh, this is just never going to work. Never. I already know it's not going to work. I don't need you people to tell me that it's going to be a disaster. It's fun. It's still fun. Physics is fun even when disaster ensues. All right. So, um, so for this system, um, we've got a, a spring with a much larger spring constant, and it's just, it's, it's no different, like making the measurement isn't really any trickier. Setting it up is, and you will have an easier time than I will have, because um, you're, you're going to have the back of the classroom, and I'm trying to do this in front of the camera, so I'm sort of limited in terms of the... Um, locations that I have to do this, but once, once I get this set up, we can get some oscillations going. So, um, so this is the same deal. I mean, we're looking at effectively the same system, and notice this one is still oscillating, which is kind of cool. This one, it is still oscillating, but now it's thumping into the sink, and that's because I can't just set, like I had it set up over these two tables. It works a lot easier set up over these two tables, but I didn't want to mess with the camera. Yeah? I know it's on me, but I'm wearing open-toed shoes. Should I live in terror? I, I mean, I, that is always a wise philosophical approach in my class. So yeah, I mean, I, I, all, I highly recommend living in terror um, when you're in this classroom. Um, but it's not necessarily like heavy weights that you need to worry about. It's my just sort of general unpredictability. Um, having said that, this is still, look at, it's like jumping around, it's kind of fun. This one, by the way, is still oscillating. Okay, I'm done talking. You all have, um, I want you to try this with as many springs as you have time for. Our new marks get set, go. 